Very good morning, students. Welcome to biology classes. Today we are going to see 12 science biology and we are going to see the chapter number 10 that is microbes in human welfare. If you wish to check my previous videos of chap of uh, 12 science, then you can check my YouTube channel for it. So let's start with the introductory part of this chapter and then we will shift to the main topics of this chapter. So first is what type of microbes you are found, like you are aware about in the household as well as the industrial application. So like where, what type of microbes are included in the household work, right? As well as what are the microbes which are involved in the industrial application? That means what kind of microbes are useful in at the industry level? So first we will see about the household application. So in the household application, we are going to see about lactic acid bacteria, which is simply uh, known as LAB, right? That is lactic acid bacteria. Now there is presence of, now the milk, right? So when the milk is present and when, if there is presence of this bacteria, lactic acid bacteria, then in the presence of the lactic acid bacteria, the milk gets converted into the curd right so the conversion of the milk to curd it occurs in the presence of specialized bacteria which are known as lactic acid bacteria now this lactic acid bacteria they produces acids right and this acids that coagulate and partially digest the milk protein so this lactic acid bacteria the what the functioning or the action which is which it does is that they produce, this bacteria produces the acid and this acid is responsible for coagulating the milk proteins. That means whatever proteins are present in the milk, they all proteins, they are combining or they are joining with each other to form the coagulate. That means small, uh, like the bulgings or small uh, parts, like they are not dispersed in the whole medium, but it forms uh, coagulations right and this way the curd is formed from the milk now small amount of curd that is added to the milk for curling acts as an inoculum containing thousands of labs which further multiplies now for the product for the production of the curd you initially need to do what you need to add small amount of curd inside the milk and this milk and the process of um, adding small amount of curd into the mill is known as curdling, right? So this curdling has been carried out and this small amount of curd which has been added to the mill, it acts as inoculum. Inoculum means it can be said as the starter culture. Starter culture means a culture or a bacteria which are responsible for uh, starting the process of the uh, lactic acid bacteria right that means the conversion of the milk to curd so when the lactic small amount of curd is been added thousands of lab that is lactic acid bacteria are present in that inoculum and what they do is at several time period what they do is this lactic acid bacteria they further multiply and upon the multiplication what they do is they partially digest the milk proteins and upon the digestion of the milk proteins they coagulate and form the curd this lactic acid bacteria enhances the nutritional value of milk by increasing vitamin b12 now as you know that lactic acid bacteria that means it is going to produce the acidic nature right and for this reason the nutritional value of the milk is being increased right and there will be increase in the vitamin b12 which you are getting from the curd so the curd comparatively contains more amount of the vitamin b12 and this vitamin b12 you get it from the curd right when the lactic acid bacteria enters or lactic acid bacteria they are acting upon the milk next is this lactic lactic acid bacteria which is present in the stomach it pre also prevents the infection now, as you know that the acidic nature of this particular curd, it is also very important for the prevention of the several different types of infections. That means due to the presence of the acidic medium, the 
and uh, the germs or the bacterias right they are not able to survive and this way the infections can be prevented so this is about the first type of bacteria and that is lactic acid bacteria second is the fermentation right now the fermentation is nothing but the use of several bacteria in preparation uh, to form a perforated or puffed up appearance right for example you are going to see is about the dosa and idli right so whatever duff you are preparing right so the fermentation is also been carried out in the duff of dosa as well as idli right and how that that is occurring with the help of the bacteria right and this bacteria what they do is they produces the carbon dioxide gas and upon action of this production of the carbon dioxide gas it is going to give a puffed up appearance that means it is going to double the duff right and this is the sign that the fermentation has taken place second example is that duff used for making bread right so for making the bread or the bakery items the for the carry for carrying out the fermentation the yeast is been added and professionally the baker's yeast is added and the scientific name of the baker's yeast is the saccharomyces cerevisiae right so this saccharomyces cerevisiae they are being used to make the duff uh, for making the breads as well as the bakery items then there is also a toddy uh, it is a south it is a traditional drink of the south india and this is made up of uh, this is made up of by fermenting the sap right of the from the palm tree so from the palm trees whatever sap food is been there this sap food is been fermented and upon the upon carrying out the fermentation of that sap a drink is been formed which is known as toddy right this can be asked in the mcq next is the cheese making right the cheese making as you know that there are several different types of cheese which are available in the market right so different types of bacteria are responsible for the production of different types of the cheese right so here we are going to see several not all the types of cheese but few type of cheese are exam with their examples and the bacteria it has been given right so the bacterium propioni bacterium shermani right you need to memorize the names of the bacterium which is going to uh, produce the different types of cheese so the swiss cheese right so in the production of the swiss cheese a bacterium is been used which is known as propioni bacterium shermani and it gives the swiss cheese means you might have seen tom and jerry right it is the having it is showing the cheese which is having small small holes right so this particular bacteria that is propioni bacterium shermani it is responsible for producing those holes by it is going to produce those holes by producing large amount of the carbon dioxide so the more amount of carbon dioxide the more amount the more number of holes right so this is about the first example of the cheese that is of the swiss cheese right second example is of the roquefort cheese this roquefort cheese is ripened by growing certain fungi on them to give them specific flavor so for pro, like for producing the proper amount of flavor right the fungi uh, is allowed to grow right uh, the roquefort cheese is ripened that means it allows uh, the fungus growth on itself and upon the growth of that fungus it this fungi is responsible for imparting the flavor to that cheese so that particular cheese is having the flavor of the fungi right so for this reason that type of cheese is known as roquefort cheese around more than 300 types of cheese are being formed uh, and also they are available in the market right this was about the household application now we are going to see about the industrial application so for the industrial purposes microbes are grown in large vessels which are called as fermenters right now here also the fermentation it is going to take place right so at industrial level right the microbes are being grown in a very large vessels and this large vessels as shown in the figure 
right? These are said to be the fermenters. So with the use of these fermenters, the microbes are able to grow and upon growing, they are producing several products, right? So on the industrial scale, the fermented beverages is also been formed. That is, you might, uh, you, you, you might have drank the Coca-Cola, Pepsi, right? Then Maza and every other beverages which you have taken, that is also a product which is a fermented product. Second, also antibiotics, that is the drugs, not the... Uh, different types of drugs but here we are going to see about the antibiotics that is they are said to be drugs but in terms of medicines right so these antibiotics also are formed with the use of several microbes and as it is going for the production of the antibiotics several fungi are also responsible right for uh, production of the anti Biotics. Next, some enzymes are also produced, right? So, these enzymes are also produced with the use of several microbes. And also, some bioactive molecules are also being prepared with the use of the microbes. So, with the use of the microbes, several beverages, antibiotics, enzymes, as well as bioactive molecules are prepared. Now, we, we are first among this, we are going to see about the fermented beverages so in the fermented beverages again the brewer sees that is saccharomyces cerevisiae it has been used to prepare wine beer whiskey brandy rum etc so whatever the alcohols uh, the people are consuming right so all this uh, alcohol based or you can say the uh, drinks which are available in the market this all the wine beer whiskey brandy rum this all does have the brewer's yeast and that is again the saccharomyces cerevisiae right so without the brewer's yeast this type of drinks cannot be formed so the fermentation over here in this type of uh, drinks is being occurred or it is being given with the use of the brewer's Yeast, right so the brewing process has been carried out and to prepare the wine beer whiskey brandy and, and some other drinks also but this is depending upon the type of raw materials and process see here the brewer's yeast is there that doesn't mean that you are going to have proper amount or proper type of wine beer whiskey etc drinks right but for this for the proper production of the uh, exact drink of that is wine beer or any other drink right then you need to have proper raw materials as well as how you are processing those raw materials right so these two processes are also very important so three things are very important for the production or for preparing a proper wine beer whiskey brandy rum or other drinks right so that is first is the brewer's yeast that is saccharomyces cerevisiae Second will be the type of raw material that is used in this process. And third one, that is how is the processing which is taking place for the production of this type of drinks. If the fermented broth is distilled, then brandy and rum are produced, while wine and beer are produced without distillation. Now, distill, you might have uh, studied about the fractional distillation in 10th standard, right? So here, 9th or 10th standard, right? So here, what you are going to see is that if the distillation is taking place right if the particular fermentation the particular medium of the ferment uh, fermentation right if that is distilled then two things are produced that is brandy and rum but while we are talking about the processes which is or the uh, drinks which are produced without distillation those are wine and beer so this again can be asked in mcq that upon carrying out the distillation process of the fermented broth what drinks are produced so that is brandy and rum but if you are going for without distillation process then only wine and beer are produced so this is about the fermented beverages third is the antibiotics right now there will be presence like certain microorganisms they inhibit the growth of other microorganisms wherever they grow now, if you want only one particular microbe to grow, then you should keep that medium sterilized. So, if there will be presence of another microbe in that medium, what happens? It does not allow the proper growth of other microbes, right? So, 
they inhibit the growth of other microorganisms wherever they grow so antibiotics are chemical substances which are produced by certain microbes that kill or retard the growth of other microbes now you know that if you are going through any of the disease then you are being given some antibiotics in against with that particular disease right so that is what antibiotics so they are nothing but they are chemical substances only and this chemical substances right they are been derived by the microbes right from the microbes and when they are derived from the microbes right this chemicals these chemicals are responsible for killing the or for killing the microbes or sometimes they also retard that means they does not allow the growth of the other microbes that is the disease causing microbes so one microbe that is beneficial to your body that is in the form of the antibiotics this particular microbes they are responsible for killing the other disease causing microbes right next is for first uh, my uh, the first antibiotic which was been discovered was the penicillin right so penicillin which was discovered by the alexander Fleming, and this was the first antibiotic which was discovered right so again this can be asked in mcq that who was the one who first discovered the first antibiotic so that was alexander fleming or we can it can also be asked like that that which was the first antibiotic which was been discovered so that is penicillin again fleming discovered it by chance when he was working on the bacterium staphylococcus after the alexander fleming right so what happened after the work after working on the penicillin he when he was working on staphylococcus bacteria at that time also he found something and he discovered that growth of staphylococcus disease in the culture plates where penicillin notatum was grown right so here what it is that particular vein of in a medium when two bacteria are present at the same time one bacteria does not allow the growth of the other bacteria so here when he was working on the bacteria staphylococcus right at that time what happened in that particular culture plates only that is in that particular medium also penicillium notatum was there so when the penicillium notatum was there so this particular uh, staphylococcus it does not allow the penicillium notatum like it does not uh, this penicillium notatum was been grown right so already where the medium which was containing the penicillium notatum right it ceases right this was already grown in the culture plates but the staphylococcus it does not allow the further growth of this particular penicillium notatum so later on its use uh it was used as an effective antibiotic was established by chain and florin so based upon this particular discovery of the staphylococcus and the penicillin notatum chain and flore was the one who worked on this project and they produced an effective antibiotic right so this is all about the basic introduction and we have seen about the home like household application as well as the industrial application right from the next in the next lecture we will see that how the several chemicals enzyme and bioactive agents are formed i hope you are very clear with today's topic and i hope to see you again thank you